Let's talk about drums today. As requested many times already, let me take you on an unscripted and hopefully not too nerdy tour of my drum kit, at least as it is in 2024. I'll try to keep it as structured as possible, so let's start off with the shell set. If I remember correctly, I bought this shell set when I was 18, so it must have been 2005 or something like that. It's a Tama Superstar Hyperdrive. I bought it as a 7-piece, so three rack toms, a floor tom, two kick drums and a snare. It was a wood snare and I... Uh, replaced it with my Tama Metalworks 13 by six and a half. And this is the snare I guess you have been hearing in probably all of my videos. So yeah, I love that snare. The toms are relatively short, which I absolutely love about this kit because it lets you set up your kit much more individually. So I, for example, like to have a very low angle from the snare to the rack toms. And yeah, otherwise with longer toms, it gets in the way with the kick drums. So yeah, that's what I absolutely love. I also also really like the mounting system of the toms it's like this free floating system here so yeah heads off to Tama I'm I know I'm a big Tama fanboy ever since I got this drum kit the sizes of rack toms are 8 by 6 10 by 6 and a half 12 by 7 the floor tom is 16 by 14 and both kick drums are 22 by 20. Pretty deep kick drums, but I really love not only how they look, but also how they sound. Like they resonate so much from the toms and the snare and it makes, in my opinion, a huge difference of the overall drum sound of this kit. The finish of the shell set was some brushed black or something. I don't know what the color actually was called. It looked pretty cool, but I got a little bored of it and I wanted to have some camo stuff. You can see that in the DIY changing process which I did a couple of months ago. You can see the old drum set in my older videos of course but this is what it looks now. Doesn't change anything of the tone so yeah it's just looks. Let's move up a little bit and talk about the cymbals. For I think four years now I'm playing all minor cymbals which was the best decision ever to switch to minor. They sound so amazing, not only to me, but also if you ask Toby from Roadkill Music Production, who's doing my mixing and mastering for all the recordings, I think he will tell you the same, that they sound much better and really very unique, very differentiated from each symbol. So yeah, it makes a big difference uh, which size of Crash, for example, you play. Uh, it sounds amazingly different and just a huge sound. Mainly I play the Minel Classics Custom Dark. Let me start over here. 16 inch Dark Trash China, 16 inch Dark Crash, 18 inch Dark Crash, 19 inch Dark Crash, 16 inch Dark Trash Crash and an 18 inch Dark China. Underneath we have the 20 inch Dark Ride. Then as my second hi-hat, I have the 14 inch dark hi-hat. Then I have a 10 inch dark splash, 10 inch dark trash splash, then an eight inch classics custom bell. My main hi-hat is the 14 inch heavy dark hi-hat and finally the 12 inch dark trash stack, which I don't use that often in recordings, I guess, but it's a lot of fun to play around to do funky accents. Uh, if it fits the song, of course. So as I said, I've been playing those for four years now. They not only look amazing, they also sound incredible. And to my surprise, in these four years, I've never broken one single cymbal. So they seem to be extremely durable as well. Hardware wise, everything is pretty widely mixed together. So a lot of different brands. But yeah, back then I tried to get whatever I could afford. Um, and yeah, I guess this is the thing that I would do different uh, if I were would start all over and get a new drum kit, then I would stick to one brand probably. The core piece is my Gibraltar rack. So everything is mounted on that rack. I use different cymbal arms. Most of them are these pearl boom arms with this quick locking mechanism, which comes in very handy whenever I need to take apart the entire drum kit and record the guitars, for example, because then I don't need to screw off every single cymbal and just can clamp it or click it and take it off. Um, so yeah, the good thing about the rack is everything is stuck in one place. So whenever I take apart and build up the drum kit again, everything is set up the exact way it was, as it was before. So that saves a lot of time. Also back then when I was touring and had the opportunity to take my drum kit, it saved a lot of time on stage because everything was set up like in my rehearsal place, for example. So yeah, racks are definitely 
a huge time saver, but also a very luxurious piece of hardware. As I said, most symbol arms are the pearl ones. I have some Gibraltar ones here for the splash symbols. And my hi-hat, for example, is still the original Tama hi-hat that came with the shell set back then. The drum throne is nothing spectacular. It's a pearl roadster, I think, with the backrest. It's not that comfortable, but yeah, it is what it is. And the only thing that I did here was to attach a little extension cord at the backrest so I can plug in my in-ears right there. So down here we have my access pedals. They are the X longboard pedals. I've been playing access pedals ever since yeah, ever since I can remember that I wanted to play fast double bass. I started out on an uh, on a used uh, Tama Iron Cobra, I think. Then for a very short time, I played a DW pedal. I don't even remember uh, the model. And then pretty quickly switched to access pedals. That was in the early 2000s when I guess everyone who wanted to play fast uh, played the Excess Longboards. They're not really easy to adjust though. They need, I think, seven different Allen keys. So yeah, that's a big pain in the ass, especially on stage when you have to do a quick changeover and you need to adjust some stuff. You always need so many different Allen keys. I don't know what Excess thought about that when they made that. And I also don't know if that's still the case with the newer pedals. But um, yeah, they work. I've never had any problems with them and I absolutely love them. So when it comes to recording the audio, I use the foot blaster triggers on my access pedals. I made a video about those and all the other trigger systems I used before that a couple of weeks ago. So if you're interested, check out that one. Um, I also record the acoustic sound of my kicks. Uh, for that, I have the Superlux E303W. The only reason I use those instead of the black ones is because the white ones were cheaper and I don't really care about the color. They just have to sound good, which they do. Moving up to the toms, I now have internal microphones. I did a video on how I converted that, where I also show how I changed the finish of my drum kit. The microphones are pretty affordable. They are by the Toman brand T-Bone. Uh, I bought them in the set, the DC-1500. So I mounted these Tom mics inside the Toms. So those are the CD-65. They sound really good. I actually had a couple of years ago the opportunity to mic my set with a very expensive Sennheiser mic set. I recorded a couple of songs with those and also, of course, with my regular <laughs> cheap mics and Toby from Rodke uh, told me that yeah there was not such a big difference so yeah there's not that much need to upgrade these microphones in my opinion at least for metal kind of stuff. So I stick to these cheaper mics um, and yeah, they work fantastic for me. I've mic'd up the snare with the classic Shure SM57 and underneath I have another T-Bone, uh, which is the CD55. There's a second CD55 on top, uh, which is only for my in-ears, which I'm going to talk about later. The hi-hat and right cymbal are mic'd up with the T-Bone EM800 and bell and second hi-hat are mic'd up with the T-Bone EM500, which came in the set of the Tom mics. On the ceiling I have two EM800s as well as my overhead mics. I mounted them on the ceiling as well when I converted my drum kit here so I don't have any mic stands to move around, measure the distance and all that pain in the ass. So yeah, they sound fantastic and I'm really happy with them. The recording rack is actually pretty straightforward. I have built a wooden rack here on some wheels. So on top I can put my laptop which of course I need to record everything. The first thing is a little LED lamp so I can can see outside and inside whenever I need to adjust something. Then I have a rack mixer. It's also from the Toman brand, the T-Mix, Rack Mix 821 FX USB. I don't use any USB stuff here. I just use it as a mixer specifically for my in-ears. Well, as I said, I have the second snare mic going into this rack mixer, which is only for my in-ears. I also have a room mic mounted to the ceiling, which is the T-Bone SC400. And I also have the trigger going in here. So the these are the three signals that I use on my in-ears in addition to, for example, songs that I play to. Um, but yeah, I prefer doing it that way instead of having all the mics going into my in-ear interface. So I have only the recording mics into the recording interface and I only use that whenever I'm actually recording and not ever when I'm, for example, just practicing stuff. The next thing is my actual recording interface. It's the Tascam US 1800. This was the budget 
version uh, with enough input channels to record actually so many drums here. Then there's the drum module, which I use only for my kick triggers, which is the Alesis DM5. I have that ever since I started using triggers. It has been heavily abused on all kinds of stages all over the world. It still works, sort of, like some stuff does not work anymore. The button is uh, missing here. And also the internal battery does not work anymore. So every time I turn it on, I have to readjust the settings, which is a pain in the ass. But yeah, I'm still th thinking about if I should replace it or maybe try a DIY solution and going into there, soldering a new battery in there. So yeah, we will see in the future if, uh, if that's gonna be a success or not. Underneath that, I have a CD player in those rare occasions that I have to learn songs that I only have on CD. And underneath that, there's all the power that I need for the rack. The last part is the drawer where I have, for example, my metronome drumsticks. I use the Promark 5B with the nylon tip and all kinds of other stuff like a tuning key for the drums, of course, Allen keys for my access pedal, a moon gel remote for the CD player and a wireless charger for my phone. So this is pretty much my entire drum kit in 2024. I hope I did not forget anything. If I did, let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this little drum tour. But that's gonna be it from me. A big thanks to all these people over here for supporting the channel. If you're interested in hours and hours of exclusive bonus content like outtakes, making offs, behind the scenes footage, lessons and monthly live streams, click here and consider becoming a patron. If you wanna watch another video here on YouTube, check out this one, which YouTube thinks would be the most interesting for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.